Hello everybody, here is the promised training case for the license barrier and let's first have a look about on the case data. So we have here the shift AG, it has evidently its seat in Germany and it has a commercial profit of 770,912.50 euro and during the computation of that figure, the following events were taken into account. Corporation tax expense, trade tax expense, remunerations for the supervisory board members, a dividend which was received of 1 million from a 20% participation, royalties paid to a sister company in Bulgaria, 10% corporation tax rate there, um, royalties paid to a sister company in the low level islands where they are taxed with a rate of 12.5%. The general corporation tax there is 15% and the discrepancy for the license fees results from the fact that 20% of a license fee is automatically exempted from tax there. Let's just assume that. Why not? These license fees furthermore amounted to 8 million euro, but it's undisputed that adequate would have only been an amount of 5 million. Uh, further on, there was an interest paid to banks of 8 million from other uh, investments. They received an interest of 1 million and the total amount of depreciations and amortizations claimed for tax purposes was 3 million. So ladies and gentlemen, this is roughly our case information. And now you and me, we have to think about that. Now, if you want to practice a bit, do yourself something good, press the break button. Um, so just stop the video at this point, take a sheet of paper, a pencil, your brain, your knowledge about taxation and perhaps a printout or a file with tax act translation. Then then try to solve the case as far as it's possible for you and later compare your solution with the one which is then to come in a second. Okay, so I recommend again, make a small break just now and then come back when you have made your own version and can compare. Okay, so here la we have uh, the case data again and let's start with the solution and naturally we begin with personal tax liability at the first step uh, because you know a case solution should always be as complete as it's possible. And so we begin with the self-evident things just to warm up our brains and to leave nothing out and to gather all the points which are possible. So the first remark we can do is that Shift AG is a juridical person, so KSDG applies. Then it evidently has its seat in Germany because AG is a German legal form and we get the information it is domiciled in Germany, so we can conclude that it's subject to unlimited tax liability under one, one, number one, capital companies, because of statutory seat or how the English would call it registered office in Germany. So that's personal tax liability. So the next step will be analyzing the events which happen or as you could also call it the objective tax liability. So let's go and begin to fight. Um, the beginning can probably be again the general introduction which reminds us of the basics. Uh, you know always with income tax or corporation tax cases there was a three-step simple approve first which type of income, second which tax base is to be computed, third which point of time will that income become tax relevant? And so if we um, make initial remarks about that, we can easily deal with most of these questions. First is the tax base has to be computed according to the rules of ESTG and KSTG. See paragraph 7.1, 7.2 and 8.1. 
under A2, everything which an AG earns is automatically classified as income from business. So if we think about the second question now, what is the tax base? It's clear that the tax base must be the profit because for income from business, it's always the profit. Now the profit must be calculated in which way? And the answer is usually by balance sheet. So it's to be determined by balance sheet, see paragraph 4.1 ESDG, and this tax balance sheet has to be based on the commercial balance sheet, paragraph 5.1 ESDG. You perhaps remember the German technical term for that connection between commercial balance sheet and tax balance sheet was Maßgeblichkeit. Um, it's rather difficult to translate that into English in a way which gives the right associations um, or the right ideas to put it simply. So I rather decided to just call it Maßgeblichkeit and you know what it's meant. Deviations um, from the commercial balance sheet are only allowed where they are either demanded or at least permitted by tax law. That's again 5.1 ESDG, the rule of Maßgeblichkeit. The whole profit, now question three, when will the amount become tax relevant, will have um, to be seen as if it had been earned on the closing date of the balance sheet, that's 7.4 KSDG. So we have answered all the decisive three questions, which give us a good frame for an approach to the case. Only one thing is now open. How high is the balance, um, the tax base? And we have already found we have to base our computation on the commercial accounting. So the result from commercial accounting is the starting point for our calculation. And then we just check if all the events which have been booked during the computation of the commercial profit have been treated in the same way as tax law requires or allows to do. Let's begin with corporation tax expense. That's naturally not deductible. It's a standard um, rule. You remember paragraph 10, number 2, KSDG. So if it is not deductible, it should be booked with a zero in tax accounting, or it should be not booked with a zero. That's not precise on the technical aspect. At least it should come into um, calculation at the final stage of events when the income is computed with a zero. But until now it has been treated or deducted from the profit with minus 165. And so that should be reversed and you eliminate minus 165 by adding back 165. So that's our first adjustment. Trade tax expenses are also not deductible, but under a different rule, 4, 5B ESDG. So the final result with which trade tax expense should go into the calculation of the taxable income is a zero. Until now we have booked minus 2 million and a bit more. So we have to reverse that deduction in order to arrive at the correct zero. The remunerations for supervisory board members is also not fully deductible. Here, the peculiarity, it's only deductible half. 10, number four, KSDG. Until now, in the commercial balance sheet, naturally, the complete expense was taken into account. Uh, so minus 500 have lowered the profit. For tax purposes, only minus 250 would be allowed to deduct. So how do we arrive from minus 500 at the allowed minus 250 by reversing plus 250? Okay, and um, now the dividends received have to be assessed. We know that under 8B1, the dividend is tax-free because the participation is more than 10%, see 8B4. So the taxable amount should be a clear zero up to now. Revenue has been included in the commercial profit with 1 million, so 1 million should be eliminated. Furthermore, we have that 5% rule to take non-deductible expense into account. So 5% of the 1 million have to be regarded as the amount of that expense which refers to the participation and is not deductible. So 
minus 50,000 have to be eliminated from the expenses by adding back plus 50,000. The royalties to Bulgaria. They um, should be examined under the perspective of the license barrier because the rate in Bulgaria is only 10%. But this rate is a general rate and not a preferential rate. And so for J, the license barrier rule does not apply at all. The license fee remains a business expense fully deductible for four. What I had forgotten in the beginning, we should have already checked if the contract between the Bulgarian sister company and the Shift AG in Germany is... Um, in line with market conditions. So if it's adequate, if it complies with the arm's length principle or whatever you want to call it. So if that's the case, and that seems to be the case, then no adjustment is uh, necessary at all. Now the royalty payments to the sister company in the low level islands. First, Let's do it properly this time. Let's first look if the royalties are really royalties or if they contain some other things. We have to do with the contract with a closely related person. A sister company is closely related to the shareholders, so the conditions of the contract must be checked if they are adequate or not. And here the case data says they are not. 3 million are inadequate, so what a careful and responsible manager would never have paid. So only the remaining 5 million are really a license fee. The exceeding 3 million are nothing else than a hidden profit distribution under the cover of a license fee. So they are not license fee, but a hidden profit distribution. First consequences, hidden profit distribution is not an expense, but a dividend payment. And so it's not deductible. See paragraph eight, um, section three, sentence two, KSDG. Until now in commercial law, the three million have been included in the license fee expense. So we have to eliminate them from there by adding back the three million. The genuine part of the license fee, 5 million, uh, has to be checked now if it uh, has to be corrected too. Here, 4J has to be applied because um, the local tax rate is lower than 25% and it is also a preferential rate what applies here. So 4J applies. That means we have now to check how much from the license fee will be um, not accepted. Here you have to make that comparison between the um, tax burden, which the German legislator wants to have, 25%, and the one which has been taken abroad, 12.5. The difference is 12.5, so 12.5 tax burden is missing, that is compared with the required 25%, exactly half. So half of the license fee will be declared as non-deductible under German law. So out of the 5 million, 2.5 million are non-deductible under 4J. Yeah. Now let's come to the last question. There is interest mentioned. So we have to think about the interest barrier. Is it applicable or not? And the answer is it will be applicable perhaps because the net interest expense is clearly higher than 3 million. So the escape clause with um, less than 3 million do not trigger interest barrier rules. That clause does not apply. The other escape clauses are difficult to prove here because um, the thing with the standalone entity that doesn't apply here because Shift AG is definitely part of a group. And um, there is also no data given which could allow us to prove that the equity ratio in Shift AG is higher than in the total group. And as the taxpayer has to prove the um, escape clauses, and we can't, we can only conclude interest barrier applies. Good. 
So let's first add everything up. Here we have first step provisory tax profit. And so that was a commercial profit of 779.12.50. Corporation tax is added back, trade tax is added back. The supervisory board is added. The dividends are deducted, the lump sum for the non ex um, non-deductible expense is added back. Royalties Bulgaria, no correction. Royalties low level islands plus 2.5 million and the hidden profit distribution, not to forget that, 3 million on top. And we end up with a subtotal of 10 million as provisory tax profit, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have to go to the next step, namely to check of the interest barrier could still change here. Now, after we have got that provisory tax result, we should now test the consequences of the interest barrier. First, let's calculate the net interest expense. 8 million were paid, 1 million was received. So the net interest expense was 7 million. And the EBITDA calculation is now provisory tax profit 10 million plus 7 million plus 3 million for depreciation and amortization 20 million. So deductible is 30%, 6 million. And so we have 7 million interest. Six are allowed, 1 million is non deductible. So the provisory tax profit goes up by 1 million to 11 million. Donations do not exist. A loss carry forward does also not exist. Um, taxable amount is 11 million. So finally, there we come to corporation tax of 15%. And we have that from 23.1 KSDG. So we end up with 1,650,000. The trade tax consequences have to be thought about now. As I really hope that you remember, the trade tax base for the trade tax is a trade profit. To compute it again, um, according to 7G trade tax law, the Berbersteuergesetz. So we begin with the income from business, which is here 11 million and uh, modify that by the modifications uh, demanded by paragraphs 8 and 9 Gewerbesteuergesetz and these modifications are here the interest and the license payments the interest is added back with the deducted interest now paid for 11 uh, or 8 million but deducted could only be 7 million because 1 million was not deductible and um, keep in mind that naturally the 1 million interest received was netted off against the interest expense during the computation of the interest barrier. But in that netting off does not take place with the Trade Tax Act because there the rule only asks for the deducted interest expense and does not talk about any um yeah any netting off um against interest received so seven million come into account one quarter of deducted license fees is also added back deducted were three uh, five hundred thousand to bulgaria plus deductible was a remaining amount of 2.5 million to the low level islands so in total, 3 million. One quarter of them is 750,000. Now that leads to a subtotal of for the addbacks of 7,750,000. We have a free allowance of 200,000. So the remaining uh, total for addbacks is 7,550,000. Now, eight number one says. The eight number one ad packs are only added back with one quarter of the final total. So that now goes down to 1,937,500. The total trade tax profit is accordingly 11 million plus the ad back amount. 
ends up with 12,907,500. Now that nice old-fashioned way to compute the trade tax burden starts. We take that by a standardized multiplier of 3.5% and end up with a trade tax base or computation base of 452,812.50. And now the city tax rate is applied to that 450% according to what the case data said under 61 Gewerbesteuergesetz. So that leads to a trade tax um, of 2,037,65620. And that brings us to an awkward conclusion, namely that what you can't really see here, that the um, provision which was made for the trade tax was evidently too high. It should be corrected in the commercial balance sheet. So the commercial profit will go up a bit and the trade tax expense will go down a bit because the person who made up the commercial balance sheet made a mistake in the computation of the trade tax prognosis. Now that doesn't really affect our results here because the trade tax expense didn't come into account when we calculated the tax base. So if it changes, um, then that has no influence to the final total, which is taxable. So that's rather a technical adjustment, which will be needed uh, in the commercial balance sheet still, but it will not affect the result because if the commercial profit goes up by, let's say, some 700,000 and the trade tax expense goes down by exactly that amount, then the total, and the total only is relevant for our computation, then the total remains the same. Okay, so that was my overview over a combined training case involving the license barrier rule of Germany and the interest barrier rule. So thanks for watching and um, in the new, next video, new stuff will come again. Ciao.